Well, this is News Pulse on Channel News Asia, the very latest on our top story today. 27 people have been arrested after a riot at Singapore's Little India district. All of those who were arrested are from South Asia. Police say no Singaporeans were involved in the riot. The situation is now under control. Police have classified the incident as rioting with dangerous weapons. <laughs> At least 10 police and four civil defence officers were amongst the 18 people hurt and sent to hospital as authorities moved in to calm the situation. A statement from the Singapore Civil Defence Force, or the SCDF, says the injured were sent to Tan Tok Singh Hospital. The riot was sparked by a fatal accident at the junction of Racecourse Road and Hampshire Road. Police say the commotion was brought under control after the Special Operations Command and the Gurkha contingent were deployed. The SEDF said they received a call about a road traffic accident at the location at 9.25 p.m. local time Sunday evening. There were reports that a man was trapped under a bus. An SEDF paramedic pronounced him dead on arrival. SEDF personnel extricated the body using hydraulic rescue equipment. The SEDF said projectiles were hurled at them while this was taking place. Police said a riot broke out shortly after involving a crowd of about 400 people. Pictures on social media showed a bus being attacked by people who smashed its windscreen and windows with metal bars and what appeared to be rubbish bins. The crowd also attacked police vehicles that were sent to the scene. As you can see here, police cars were flipped onto their sides and attacked by the crowd with bars or sticks. At least two vehicles were also set ablaze, one a police car, the other an ambulance. The flames were later put out, leaving the burnt-out shells. Police confirmed that five police vehicles and one ambulance were damaged, along with several private vehicles. A large area of Little India remains cordoned off, and police have advised the public to stay away and for residents to remain indoors as operations continue. Singapore DPM Teo and Minister in the Prime Minister's Office S. Iswaran have both visited the affected area and they say the situation is under control. Mr. Teo Chihen said the government takes such incidents very seriously and will not tolerate such lawless behaviour. He said the government will spare no effort in dealing with the matter. News of the incident is trending worldwide on social media. Singapore's acting manpower minister has urged people to stay calm and not to fan the situation with speculation or to stir racial sentiment. Mr. Tan Chuan Jin made the calls in posts on Facebook and Twitter. The riot took place Sunday night when the Little India area is packed with visitors. Our Channel News Asia's Nicholas Fang, our associate editor, has just come out of the news conference by Singapore authorities on this matter. Nicholas, what are police saying about how this riot started in the first instance? Hi, Wei Su. Uh, yes, the press conference uh, ended not too long ago. It was a very short, uh, terse and tense press conference. It lasted about 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, the uh, information that was, uh, of, of course, revealed uh, is still a little bit scanty at this point in time, given the, the recent uh, nature of the incident. Uh, the police did confirm uh, that the incident was sparked off by the accident between the private bus and the pedestrian that re resulted in the death of the pedestrian. Uh, we asked the question if uh, there was any sense of a premeditation in terms of the rioting that took place uh, and they have uh, indicated uh, police have indicated as of now that there is no indication that the attacks were premeditated they were sparked off by that particular accident alone well uh, there have been reports on different times how long the time the police took to respond to the situation how did the police respond to the situation did they explain well, uh, they, they did uh, share with us that the, uh, the report of, the, of a rioting taking place at Racecourse Road uh, was first uh, received by the police at 9.23 p.m. Uh, yesterday evening on the 8th uh, of December on Sunday. Uh, within uh, a short period of time, the police were actually on site. 
uh, when when China News Asia, when we re- arrived on the scene at about 11 p.m., uh, the, the scenes of rioting had already been dispersed. There were a lot of people leaving the area. Uh, police riot squads were, of course, still on site. Uh, but uh, we're trying to get a better sense of how the rioting uh, spread and then was contained. And the police uh, have indicated that investigations are still ongoing and they will share the information with us as soon as it is, as it is forthcoming. Uh, Nicholas, as you mentioned, when we first spoke to you around uh, 11.20, you, you were telling us that uh, the place was cordoned off and uh, people were told not to go near that area for their own safety. Is, is the area, are those areas in Little India, are they still cordoned off? Uh, well, uh, again, just, uh, just a, a little bit of information that came from the press conference. Uh, a total of 300 police had actually been deployed initially when the reports of the rioting uh, were first received. And that number sounds significant, uh, but the police said that they did this so as to ensure that they were able to contain the rioting, to disperse the rioters and apprehend uh, any suspects that required to be uh, apprehended. So uh, that was the number of uh, policemen deployed to the scene. When we left the scene at about 1 p.m., uh, uh, 1 a.m. The, this morning, uh, the cordons were still up, but the uh, Special Operations Command, uh, 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 the very um, uh, uh, large red vehicles had actually uh, moved away from the scene, and uh, the, the emphasis seemed to have been shifted to the SEGF uh, uh, officers who were trying to clean up the mess, put out the fires, uh, and restore some kind of uh, stability into the area. So at that stage, uh, I believe uh, it, the, the, the situation was, uh, was relatively safe and stable. We saw residents from the uh, blocks in the area starting to come down and to inspect the scene uh, in, on Racecourse Road itself. So uh, that was at 1 a.m. a couple of hours ago, and it looked uh, safe and stable then. Of course, uh, DPM Tio and Minister Iswaran also said at the press conference they have visited the site, and uh, they said the situation is under control uh, for now. Uh, Nicholas, the focus switching now to apprehending suspects, and we've already heard from that conference you are at, 27 people being arrested. Could you tell us anything more about these arrests or the identities of those who have been arrested? Uh, well, uh, as you mentioned at the start uh, of the bulletin, uh, 27 arrested, they are all from South Asia. No Singaporeans are among those arrested, and no Singaporeans were involved in the rioting. That's what the police uh, said in response to our questions earlier. Uh, the p- bus driver and the assistant uh, who were driving the private bus involved in the accident are currently in hospital. They were slightly injured, uh, but police have confirmed that they are, as of now, not arrested, uh, and they are, of course, helping with the investigation. Uh, the police were unable to give us more details about the identities of the 27 who have already been arrested, other than the fact that they are South Asians. Uh, they have said they do expect to make more arrests uh, in the coming uh, days. Uh, and given the number of people who are involved with the rioting, 400, uh, and the, the seriousness of the charge, which is rioting with dangerous weapons, I think it's not a surprise that uh, we will see more arrests uh, in the days to come. Oh, you mentioned the very terse, very tense mood at that news conference. And we've also heard um, Deputy Prime Minister coming out saying, uh, and Mr. Tan Chuan Jin as well, do not fan racial sentiment. Is that, do you feel that that mood now is just to contain things and to really release strictly what are facts and to really stay away from speculation? I think that's, uh, that's crucial right now, especially given the, uh, the scantiness of the information that's available to us. Uh, one question that was asked at the press conference was whether, when was the last time Singapore had experienced uh, an incident of rioting of this nature? Uh, and to be honest, uh, no one in the room could remember the last time. Uh, the, 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 the police commissioner said that he has been on the force for 26 years and he has not, in his, rem- in his memory, uh, uh, seen an incident like this. So they agreed that they haven't seen something for the past 30 or 40 years of this nature. A question was also posed to DPM Tio as, as to whether or not um, Singapore's reputation as a safe place uh, would be affected by this. He acknowledged that Singapore has a long-standing uh, reputation on the international uh, scene as being a stable and safe country, a safe location. And he said that um, the government and the police will spare no effort into ensuring that, uh, that those who are responsible for this very, very serious crime of rioting with, serious, uh, with uh, dangerous weapons will be uh, brought to justice uh, and justice will be uh, met out uh, strictly and firmly uh, to ensure that this does not happen again. So I think uh, that represents, uh, that was a very strong message, message that came out of the press conference of how serious 
uh, Singapore takes an incident of this nature. All right. Thank you very much indeed. That was our associate editor, Nicholas Fang, speaking to us. Uh, he has been at a press conference which has released uh, the first uh, serious official information as well as messages to the public. Uh, let's take a look at this photograph now sent by Channel News Asia digital producer Deborah Ong. It shows police at Little India. Our Singapore resident, Tan Kok Wah, lives in one of the blocks of flats overlooking the incident area earlier this evening. Oh, this is his version of what happened when the crowd surrounded a bus earlier. A very quick uh, uh, context to that crowd, uh, to that bus. The bus apparently ran over a worker and the bus was uh, transporting workers to dormitories. Hence the, uh, the furore around that bus. The bus could not move. Uh, it simply was there and the mob was cheering. It was cheering for something that... Uh, like, like since that they have some issue with the bus driver, I believe, and they just refused to let the bus move. So the police, police came, but they still refused. They still refused. Yes, to disperse. Oh, yeah, yeah. Met, um, yeah, Mr. Tan, th this is entirely yes. unconfirmed. So I'm just asking you. Earlier, we received an unconfirmed report that mm -hmm. the bus may have run down and hurt uh, a Bangladeshi worker. This is okay, this uh, is not okay, confirmed. For, Did you yeah. see any sign of injuries? Uh, a gentleman being hurt? Did you see anyone hurt on the scene? Okay, uh, from from my conjecture, I saw from uh, from from the top, uh, there was an ambulance. Okay, uh, they rushed to bring somebody. Uh, there, there was also a civil defense uh, and uh, force there as well. Uh, yeah, they were there as well. So I guess it was because of injury because I did saw them carrying a person out to an ambulance. Yeah. All right, and so the when, when they yeah. carried this person now, at which point? Eight plus, nine plus, before or after they flipped the police uh, cars? Okay, uh, yes, that was uh, before they flipped the police car. That was before. Uh, Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong has made his first comment on that riot in a Facebook post early Monday morning. Mr Lee said several police officers were injured and vehicles were damaged or destroyed. The situation is now under control and he said investigations are underway. He added that whatever events may have sparked the rioting, there is no excuse for such violent, destructive and criminal behaviour. He said the government will spare no effort to identify the culprits and deal with them with the full force of the law. Mr Lee urged all Singaporeans to stay calm and asked the public to send the police any information, photographs or videos of that incident that they might have. He also wished the injured officers a full and speedy recovery. Well, the Singapore Police Force has also issued an urgent appeal for any photographs, video footage, mobile phone images and or audio files that were taken either in or close to the areas connected to the riots in Little India. They're asking for the information to be submitted online at uh, http colon um, www.spf.gov.so sg pardon me sg slash eyewitness or www.spf.gov.sg slash crime stopper oh this is only the second time as we just heard from nicholas fang earlier in post independence singapore history that there have been riots the previous incident was more than 40 years ago the 1969 race riots lasted seven days Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister Teo Chi Hien outlined how the government intends to deal with this incident. I want to make very clear that the government will not tolerate such lawless behaviour. I've asked the police to investigate the matter thoroughly and deal with all aspects of this incident and all persons involved strictly, firmly and fairly according to our law. And I ask the members of the public uh, to stay calm, not to react to any speculation, and let the facts be established. 